high places Falling through lost spaces Now that we're lonely Now that there's nowhere to go Watching from both sides These clock towers burning up I lost my time here I lost my patience with it all Faith in the arms of love My name is Ben Kuehl and I run the Glide Surf School on Chroma and soon to be opening a shop as well um, hopefully the start of the summer called the Cedar House Surf Shop is going to be the, the plan I guess my my main involvement, and I want to try and keep it that way, is is, is, a, is a surfer myself. Um, and so yeah, trying I'm still trying to maximise maximise the amount of time I can spend surfing myself. Or previously being a full time teacher, now being part time, that's using my sort of skills of teaching to, um, I guess, kind of try and bring the the surfing the experience of surfing um, to Chroma. I mean, I, I do, I really love Chroma. Um, it's just been an amazing place and time living here. Um, for me, in terms of, aside from the surfing side of things, I think it's a great sized town. It's, it's got that kind of really local feel to it where you know lots of people and, you know, really friendly, um, yet kind of not that small that it's, you, you can't get things. It's got a good range of shops and supermarket and train station and great pier and things like that. So from that point of view, it's, it's really good. In the summer, it can get extremely busy, um, and then slowly, as the summer drifts away, you know, you, in the winter it can get quite, um, you know, it's very quiet. Down there today, I was down on, on the promenade, and it was grim. <laughs> you look at the size of the the North Sea, the fetch is is obviously is is fairly small, and considering the distance of the waves travel from into the Atlantic and the whole of the west side of, of the UK. Um, so the swells are very short-lived and you have to kind of be really um, watch the forecast and know what the conditions are doing to, to get the, the days when it is good. I guess the plus side to that is that a bit living on this side of the, of the country and, and surfing this coastline is that we don't have the crowds. Um, and yeah, the waves can, can be on, on their day can be, can be really good. surfing about um, like four or five years probably now. Started, I remember it was in the winter. I went with my mate and it's really early in the morning, it's just so cold. I mean you start shivering and stuff and it does slow your motor skills down. We never caught a wave for about a month um, until we uh, just went with our mate who'd been surfing a couple of years and he, he uh, lent us his board and um, we eventually just caught a wave, stood up on it for about a second and then we were hooked. Hypothermia, you can get hypothermia quite easily, I think, from around here. But you can get wetsuits now, like with little elements in which warm you up, the hoods, gloves, uh, boots as well. You just have to be really, really fit around here, uh, and I think, if you're going to catch waves. People say if you can surf around here, you could pretty much surf anywhere. <laughs> if, you, if you're pretty good around here, you can surf sort of waves in France and that, um, because they're a lot easier to catch out there compared to here, supposedly. It's really hard to describe, it's like no, no other feeling. Like once you get on a wave, you're just like floating and you can just see the shore, just everything just, it just feels like it goes on forever, really. And then you kind of don't know how long you've been on the wave for and just so happy when you get off, you just want to keep catching more. Just the buzz of catching a wave and also the buzz of seeing it a friend on a wave, uh, it's just as good a thrill. And I tell everyone who wants to start, who's sort of a bit dubious, I said, as soon as you catch your first wave, you will be hooked. <laughs> friend of mine, Ed Land, we, we bought um, 
six old swell boards and 20 wetsuits. With the idea of we set up um, a youth group in Cromer, um, taking some of the kids surfing from church we, we, where I'm still at and which Ed was at as well. I wanted to set up a start a business as well and to start the surf school up. And so it started from, yeah, half a dozen surfboards and 20 old wetsuits out the back of a car <laughs> um, to now. And that's just developed. So that was six weeks for the first year in the summer and three months the second year. Third year, six months, fourth year, six months, fifth year, six months. And now I think I've got probably like a big trailer, probably like 40 odd boards ranging from six foot to I think it's like 11 foot stand up paddle boards. I guess the, the, the slackest day I could have is I kind of might just have one lesson and I can get up and just do a few emails. Um, drive to South Reps where I currently keep all my equipment in lock up over there, bring the trailer to the beach, um, obviously unpack, do the lesson, pack everything back up again and drive back to South Reps. Longest days in the summer, I think the busiest day I had last year, I had, I think I had a school group down, I had like 40 kids through the surf school, so I was literally in the sea from I think it was like nine o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, I'd like, oh, 20 minute break at lunch for a sandwich. Yeah, some, some days it can be really long. Never seem to gauge a busy day unless it's all booked in and even then the day never seems to be how you kind of imagine it. So that's the nature of, I guess, the tourist industry. It's not just about me bringing surfing to Cromer. Um, I don't really want to turn it into, say, a traditional surf town. Surfing's just one thing that can Cromer can offer, but I think for me as well, it's been an amazing way of building bridges kind of be between people and within the community as well. Oh, where you been hiding lately? Where you been hiding from the news? Oh, hiding lately. Hiding from the news. Oh, Cause we've been fighting lately. Oh, we've been fighting with the war.